Today we have a really fun project where we take bubble gum and propel it at supersonic speeds. And I gotta admit, I'm amazed this even worked. And even more amazing, the guest shooters today are perfect strangers that I found on Facebook. Now it's been decades since I've had any hubba bubba bubble gum. And recently I've gotten several comments and messages from viewers asking us to try this out. The weight of the bubblegum bullet is exactly 8 grams or 125 grains, which is about the weight of a 9mm bullet. But our bubblegum bullet is colossal compared to the size of a 9mm. Most of these were just loaded into a federal field and target shell. And for fun, one was loaded really hot. And for our test, we'll be using a rifled shotgun because these will need spin stabilization. Hey everyone, this is Jeff. Uh, I needed someone to come out this weekend and shoot with me. Officer Greg was out of town. Brianna was busy as usual. So I did the dumbest thing in the world. I asked someone on, you know, at, on Facebook, hey, I need someone to come out and shoot with me. And I didn't think I'd get any response or anything, but we got a whole bunch of people coming out. And I want to thank you. Introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm an exploding fruit enthusiast. Glad to be here. <laughs> What's up? I'm David, and they found me under the overpass on the freeway. <laughs> well, speak up now. <laughs> I am Josh. <laughs> Go ahead. And I'm Mark, and I'm the one who found the guy under the overpass. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Who gets to shoot first? I think Mark's going to be shooting. Okay. Wow. Shot number one went remarkably well. Mark nailed the melon dead center. Now one of the concerns I had was the fact that we're using bubble gum, it's rather soft, and we're shooting these through a fully rifled shotgun. The slug is spinning at around 37,000 RPM, and it's very stable in flight. And because it's spinning so fast, my concern was that the centrifugal force would just rip that giant bubblegum bullet apart. One of the things we did was use an ice pack to keep the gum from getting too soft in the heat. It seemed to work. Well, so I shot the, the shell and it looks like it came straight through to, it didn't go straight through the, the watermelon and it kind of mushroomed out. <laughs> you found just, it. This is the gum piece as, as it is, I don't know which side. It looks like this is the side that actually hit. We found it <laughs> right, right here, but I mean, see that? And it, and it was just, accurate. It was, it was, it was pretty accurate. Yeah, I aimed like dead center right Blew there. Blew his face off. Blew his face off. Doug, as I'm calling him. <laughs> um, Doug is no yeah. more. Doug, yeah. All right, so our next target is going to be what looks like an old piece of a computer or something. Looks around 14 gauge steel sheet metal and yeah that's about it. Okay we'll see if we can get penetration and we are 13 yards away we forgot to mention that with the watermelon. Oh yeah. 13 yards what is that in meters? Heck of a <laughs> Oh <laughs> it's like uh 12 meters. Yeah. Yeah okay okay based off the watermelon shot and what you what you know about sheet metal what is your prediction of whether this will penetrate that sheet metal or not? I don't think it's going to penetrate. I think at most it'll dent it, and it'll be a slight, a slight bulge because you're going to see it spread. And we might even be able to. It may even stick. Okay. Would, I'd be curious to see if it's going to stick on. That. Okay. I feel like it's going to split, kind of like it's going to hit it. It's going to create a dent, and it's going to splatter. Split. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we're going to get a non-Newtonian mushrooming of wild cherry or possibly mixed berry. Uh, <laughs> it'll create a dent without penetration, so I guess I'm going with the crowd. Um, honestly, I think it'll it'll dent, but it, it ain't gonna go through. Oh, come on, you gotta have faith in the hubba bubba. <laughs> okay, we'll find out. 1345. Okay. I think I was the only one that predicted it would go through. And like most of my predictions, I was wrong. Again. Now this piece of sheet metal was actually 18 gauge or about uh, 1.2 millimeters thick. But it did leave a very impressive dent in it. Let's take a closer look at that. Whoever said it wouldn't penetrate, which is almost all you guys, 
You were right. Yeah, basically, it, it hit a little off, a little off target. I mean, I mean, just the, <laughs> just the fact that you could hit that from yeah. 13 yards, uh, I think, is still impressive. Yeah. But yeah, it just it bulged out a little bit. I don't know if you can see how much. Oh yeah, I mean that's it would take a a sledgehammer to do that, right? It's pretty impressive. I mean, for yeah, 15 gauge is is pretty good for a piece of just a piece of bubble gum doing that. I mean, if you were standing behind this, you would you'd have a little bit of a bruise. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, don't shoot your friends with bubble gum. No. I think that's the take here. It's a little bit more extreme than airsoft. A little bit, yeah. I think it would really do some damage. Okay, we got the tactical toilet paper, FBI certified. Now we have Josh shooting. Turn around and say hi. <laughs> Josh is their dad, by the way. Got it. This is one of the big surprises of the test. Most people would probably say that a piece of bubble gum would not go through a, you know, an extra large roll of toilet paper like that. I mean, it didn't go through the sheet metal, but boy, did it plow through that toilet paper like it was standing still. Now, viewers constantly tell us that a target has to be strapped down and supported otherwise it'll move back and absorb the energy. Now there's nothing supporting that very light roll of toilet paper and that slug passes all the way through it before it even thinks about moving. And the bubblegum bullet hardly deformed at all after passing through hundreds of layers of paper. All right, well, it did not do what I expected, I can tell you that. Uh, I was expecting it to hit and flatten kind of thing and maybe just stick. Um, but instead, if you look right there, I mean, it came through right. You could put a finger it. through that if you wanted to. Do we need to do a little OG <laughs> right there? A little OG action for you. Um, and then look at the exit wound. Wow. Kind of thing. So, but was, you know, I, I wonder how much of that is from it expanding. Versus I don't think it, it expanded that much. Yeah, I think this is just, you know. You, you could see the, the gum coming out the backside in the high speed. Yeah. And it's like in the same shape. And I was expecting because of the give, because you know it's that super <laughs> softness there that it would have flattened or something like that. Yeah, oh boy. it's it's always amazing me. That's what yeah. velocity does, you know. Okay, Ryan is up next, and he's gonna shoot the truck fender. Still at 13 yards. Let's see, any predictions? Will it go through or dent it? No, I'm saying dent it. Dents it. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Okay, I'm ready. Whoa. Whoa. Now I'm still kind of amazed that we were able to obtain ballistic stability using bubble gum. Now, had we fired these through a smoothbore shotgun and not obtained that spin, these things would have been flying sideways. They wouldn't have been very accurate. And when they hit, there would have been even less chance of them penetrating anything. Well, as you can see, we found a cost-effective method of removing paint and primer here. <laughs> yep. Uh, we weren't able to find the gum, which is a little odd. I would have thought it would just drop right there, but it is either bounced off or evaporated or some such and yeah it put a pretty good dent in there which is surprising to me yeah it didn't go through though yeah i was hoping for now, a, a little mm. bit of penetration is what i like maybe just a little <laughs> bit but i'll <laughs> i'll take the dent okay okay ryan brought along an acorn squash i think it is none of us are really certain what it is because we don't eat that okay are you going to uh, aim a little bit, use a little bit of California windage? Going for the left eye because they've been pulling right. Okay, let's see if that um, pays out or not. Okay, so he's got to make up an adjustment. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I think it still hit to the right a little bit. This is a really neat shot because we can see the air being compressed by this supersonic slug. And this time the 
bubble gum flattened out really big as it tried to bore through this squash. But I was kind of amazed he hit it at all. You hit it. Yep. That's good. Well, we shot this with solid hubba core bubba. And as you can see, it ejected its lung directly out of its body. <laughs> we couldn't find the gum. That's going to be in the next county over by now. Um, I aimed for the left eye and it hit the right eye, so these do seem to be consistently pulling right. Yeah. And it just blew its top straight off. The, the accuracy, though, is really quite surprising. I'm thinking of switching from lead to gum shot for all my competitions. <laughs> you don't have to, you, you can shoot however you want. Because I'm not filming that other goofy way. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. That one shot to the right. That was aiming at the left. This is how I expected all of them to fly, to be honest with you. This one didn't didn't fly as stable as the others, that's for sure. But I can certainly appreciate the fact that he still hit the cabbage at all. Again, they're going to the right, and there's all kinds of theories going around. It, it, it's starting to warm up a little bit. The gum's getting softer, causing it somehow favor going uh, to the right for some reason. I wouldn't. What's the, what's the twist on the barrel? Is it a left or a right hand twist? It's a right hand. So if you look, you know, from the back, it's clockwise. It seems to be obeying Cole's law. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm glad someone got that. Oh my gosh. Oh, Lord, was that recording? Cole's law, okay. So anyway, you again, it hit a little to the right. It blew all the way through it, right? Yeah, it did, yeah. I was aiming right here, and it just it went straight You were aiming that through. far over, huh? Yeah, I was, I was like, I wanted to hit here. And so I knew that it would be like an inch, so I aimed over here, hoping that it would hit here. Wow. It went even further. It, for, it just keeps creeping over to the right. That's crazy. Him and his brother and his dad have to leave in a few minutes, so he's going to take one more shot at an even smaller target, the beans. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> wow. Great shot. Fantastic. Oh, that was Fantastic. Perfect. What a way. Roll that beautiful bean footage. I'm ready. Holy! <laughs> wow! Now the way things were going, I did not expect David to hit the can at all. I thought it was going to be a miss. And much to all of our surprise, he nailed it. Now I told everyone it, it would take about an hour and a half to film this. Well, here we are at about three and a half hours and we're not even done yet. But I did get a really nice email the next day from Josh saying how much fun they had and how it was a really memorable experience to spend with his sons. And honestly, that was really touching to me and that made this whole experience that much better. Okay, according to the meme or the myth, whatever people are telling me about the Hubba Bubba shotgun shell, they were able to shoot one through a stop sign at 20 to 25 yards. I haven't got it. I don't know if it, which, which it is, it's 20 or 25 yards. And why are people are shooting at stop signs, I don't know. But anyway, we, we do have a stop sign. And we, and, and I did load one, I hand loaded this one to be particularly hot. How hot, I'm hoping 1600 feet per second, maybe. We've also been cooling it under an ice pack so that the gum is a little harder. It's possible that whoever did the shotgun meme, it might have been in the middle of winter, the gum was really hard. I, I, we don't know, because nobody actually sent me the meme. So anyway, this is, this is gonna tell us a lot if that meme is true or if they just, just faked it. You know, that's entirely possible. They could have said they shot it with a Hubba Bubba gum slug and actually shot it with a Foster slug. Well, here's a Hubba Bubba slug. Let's see if it goes through. Let's do it. Okay, ready. That was a boom. Whoa. Now this is what I expected to see on most or all of the shots using full rifling. But because we were shooting at a much higher velocity, the rate of spin is a lot higher too. And the bubblegum bullet just began to pull itself apart from centrifugal force. Now on this shot, the chronograph did read for a second 935 feet per second, which I don't believe. 
1,800 feet per second is probably closer to what this thing was traveling at. The, the previous shots, you know, you'd feel a little tap on your shoulder like it was nothing. This was the first shot that felt like a shotgun, you know, doing that push against you. Um, yeah, so we have like this really nice dent here, no penetration, um, it stopped it. And of course, that's because this is an MUTCD compliant stop sign. And so federal, state and local law dictates that you have to stop for it. Otherwise, Greg's gonna come to my house and arrest me. <laughs> so, nope. It no penetration. Can you flip it around, unclamp it, and flip it around, show the bulge? This is a steel stop sign. It's possible that they were using, oh, that's a, look at that. I mean, it, it's up like a, like a half of a golf ball here. Yeah, totally, just, yeah. Just hanging out, and the, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the whole thing is slightly warped, and I, I don't <laughs> think it came that way. Nope, it was flat. Okay, so tw at 25 yards, it wouldn't have done any better. Definitely wouldn't, you know. No, this is half that distance. I, I, I think it's entirely possible these things are accurate enough. You, I mean, we're using full rifling. It's a highly doubtful they were using full rifling. And... Well, and when I saw it, even with my eye, you know, when it hit the sign, it just sprayed and vaporized. Yeah. There, 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 it didn't hold together enough to do nothing. Yeah. We got we have the fender. Let's shoot the fender at like five yards. That sounds good. Yeah, because this, I I mean, I don't even think if we did that, it would make a difference. Like yeah. this, this was not close to penetrating. Nope. Not even a tear or anything. We're going back to the original normal powder loads. Now we're at seven yards away at the truck fender. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. That tells us a lot. Well, so help me. <laughs> now since the stop sign is so much thicker than the fender, and we were not able to get penetration of the fender at 13 yards, however, this time, being so close, we did. And that should give you an idea how quickly these projectiles decelerate. So it seems pretty unlikely that someone could shoot a stop sign, even if it was made out of aluminum, at 20 or 25 yards and get penetration. Now, if I was to look at that, I would think a factory lead slug went through that. Yeah, and it turns out maybe the difference is just, well, the distance. Look, look at that. that. That's the only difference. The, they were the exact same powder loads. One was at 13 yards, the other at seven yards. Yeah, and we can't find the gum, it just vaporized. I think that was a green one too. There's still some green yep. stuff on there. Yep, a little bit. At 25 yards, very unlikely. If they did do it, I would say it was done at very close range like that. That's just my opinion, but. 25 feet, sure. 25 feet, possibly, yeah. A, a suggestion that people always ass is you ought to shoot the porcelain from a spark plug at a window and see if you'll break the window. Sir, I have thrown porcelain at a window and shattered it. When someone suggested that last time, I said, I bet I could shoot a, a gummy bear through a window. Hmm. I don't have a gummy bear, but we got bubble gum. That's pretty close. They're both con tasty confectionery, very tasty. And so, satisfying to splat. Yeah, so will the bubble gum shatter the window like a piece of porcelain. What do you think? <laughs> um, after seeing, yes, yes. All obviously. day, every day, any day. That, I think the shot cup would do it. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Okay, let's do it. And thank you, Darren, for supplying the window. Huh, okay. So yes, a bubblegum bullet will go through a car window effortlessly. And the amazing thing is Ryan called it when he said the shot cup would also go through it. And that is how you know Ryan has been watching our videos for a long time. Okay, so pretty much anything goes through a car window. Even the shot cup went through. Yeah, we got the gum hole and the cup hole. <laughs> this car now Here. has one more cup holder. <laughs> oh, there you go. Even the that little plastic wad, it came, it, it hit long after the, the slug hit, but even it went through. So anyway, you don't need a porcelain slug to go through a car window. 
a piece of gum and a shot cup is more than enough if shot at high enough velocity. Anyway, thank you, Ryan, for coming out with me and film. It's a you, pleasure. You found me on Facebook. We were total strangers, and we had to trust each other that we weren't both serial killers. You still don't know for sure. Well, we still don't know. <laughs> but it was a pleasant experience. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, maybe we'll get you out here again if you're uh, up to it. Well, thank you so much, Tough Later Mouse and Tough Later fans. This has I been think, a sincere pleasure. Me, uh, my channel's called Tough Later Mouse. It, for some reason, some people call me Tau, but most people call me Jeff. <laughs> if you insist, Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it was fun, right? Didn't want to be out in you or nothing. <laughs> no. No, I always say I'm Jeff. Yeah. It's no secret. All right. I hope everyone enjoyed the bubblegum slug and we knew what it, we saw what its limitations are. We saw what it can do and what it can't do. We think the meme about the stop sign was probably um, exaggerated, maybe. Uh, either a closer range or follow me on this. They may have doctored it for the views. Yeah. But if they were within range, we did show that it's possible. Yep. You've got to be up close, though. It's shocking to me. Yep. Well, thanks again. We'll see you next time. Boop.